The Palestinian president appeals for the support of the Arab League and tomorrow envoy Martin Indyk will convene a special meeting with both sides. Iran and six world powers conclude the third round of talks in Vienna with wide gaps on a final agreement still unresolved. 20 students and staff injured in a knife rampage at a high school in Pennsylvania. Four students are in critical condition and a male student is in custody. Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. Some see the actions of Jewish extremists in the West Bank as one of the biggest threats to the stability and security in the area for Israel and the Palestinian Authority. The last few days uh, showed the uh, consistent clashes between Israeli settlers from the settlement Bitar and IDF reserve soldiers. Today, we will try to understand the ideology that stands behind it and what exactly is considered as the Israeli far right. Joining me tonight is Baruch Mazel, head of the Jewish National Front. Good evening. Shalom. Thank you very much for coming. And Mossi Raz, former member of Israeli parliament of the Meretz party. Good evening. So before we try to understand, do you accept the term far extreme right? Well, uh, if uh, Musi Raz is a far extreme, uh, extreme left, so uh, we're extreme right. So who benefits from the acts that we saw yesterday in Itzhar? When you see Jewish are attacking other Jewish, are attacking soldiers, Israeli soldiers. Who's benefiting from this? Well, they were fight, uh, the we, settlers. We have to ask uh, what happened there exactly. Uh, no one could talk with me about uh, like soldiers. I was in the army, I was wounded in the army. For 30 years, I'm very, very active for Israeli soldiers everywhere. And uh, I love the Israeli soldiers. My kids are in the army also. But uh, they are uh, politicians and uh, high rank officers that, uh, for political reasons, will uh, uh, attack Jews and destroy his houses uh, for no reason. If uh, uh, someone uh, 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 someone damaged uh, an army jeep, he has to be arrested. But uh, it cannot be that the army goes uh, two days afterwards and destroys uh, four houses uh, in Itzhar in the same day. Uh, um, two Molotov cocktails a mile away burned an Arab jeep, uh, a jeep of uh, the Israeli army. And I didn't hear that the same army uh, destroy uh, illegal Arab houses in Hawara because you cannot punish Arabs in uh, collective uh, punishment, but you could uh, punish Jews in the collective uh, punishment. It's not legal, it's not good, and uh, uh, it's done only for political reasons. So are the politi politicians the one to blame? The politicians are uh, to be blamed by the fact that the occupation is still there, that settlements are uh, existing, and this is a, a moral crime, and it's uh, damaging the interests of the Palestinians, of the Israelis, and of course the Israeli army. And uh, they have to be blamed on the collective punishments that they uh, they uh, give to. I would say everybody, but of course uh, for the Palestinians. Uh, I think that uh, we see now that the fake negotiations, that were never negotiations from the very uh, first minute, because there were only a, a fake negotiations that all the purpose of those negotiations uh, were uh, to build in the settlement, to expand the settlement activity. In these eight months of settlements, 60 Palestinians were killed by the Israeli army, so I don't think that it's doing nothing. Uh, 150 uh, houses were demolished. Uh, more than 10,000 units in the settlements were approved. And most important, this was only uh, in order to make um, 
kind of uh, illustration of negotiations without doing any, anything on the ground. M Mr. Marzal, I'm asking myself, you're, you just told me that your uh, children are going to the army, are in the army yeah. uh, right now. Do you really think that Israel doesn't have enough problems than to go and actually start fighting itself? Well, I uh, don't expect from uh, people in uh, Itzhar that More are attacked if for no attack reason and their houses are children, destroyed for no reason. You will accept only. an attack for, uh, on your children if they are going and following orders? Well, I will accept my kids not to obey illegal re uh, orders and not to destroy houses of Jews only because they're Jews. If the army would uh, do the same, uh, have the same behavior towards Arabs and towards Jews, I think that everybody will understand but it. But they do. They do. We just heard I told they you do. that the same day that a jeep, a tire of a jeep was uh, damaged, the same day three soldiers almost were burned to death a, uh, a mile away. And I didn't hear that the army destroyed so even a small house that uh, illegal in the city, in the village of Hawara, because the Arabs, you don't do these kind of things, because people like Musi Raz and others uh, will go to the international law and say it's not legal to do a collective punishment, but to do collective punishment to Jews. It's legal, it's not legal also. So, so take when, out the army. Just can you, can the settlers live without the army there? Well, the people in Itzhar uh, lived for years without the army. I think uh, that uh, the position that uh, was damaged in Itzhar is a position that's defending the Arabs around Itzhar, not the people of Itzhar. And I think that they, uh, so the and is they like the, the army, the they like, uh, they like uh, the army, but they don't need the army to be inside the settlement. And if the army wants to leave, they could leave. They could leave Hebron also. It's very uh, easy. Yeah, if the army if, wants uh, to leave, they can leave. If uh, Mr. Mazel says that the army ha is there in order to protect the Palestinians, uh, the main of that, that there is something to protect from. So probably he understands very well that uh, some and I don't want to say all, but uh, some of these uh, settlers in Hebron, that, like you mentioned, and Itzar, are very uh, violent and are danger to their Palestinian neighbors. Otherwise, there is no need to protect them. Second, uh, the fact that uh, the campaign between the Palestinians and the, and the Israelis, I'm saying again, unfortunately, 60 Palestinians were shot to death in the last eight months. Fortunately, no Israeli and no settler was uh, shot to death by the uh, except one soldier who was shot uh, to death by a mistake, not a... Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, I, I, everybody, knows, everybody knows that uh, being uh, uh, 50 Palestinians, if they try to attack an army location, uh, military location in the same way that the settlers had done it uh, yesterday, it could have been with uh, probably 50 people who were killed. I am not suggesting to shoot anybody, not Palestinians and not settlers. I do know that in, in this case, if they were Palestinians, they were dead. But uh, it's only because the, the orders towards the Palestinians are mistaken, not because the orders to, towards the settlers are mistaken. Mr. Marzal, well, I, have, I have only news for Mr. Raz that today an army position in El Arub was burned down by Arabs. No one was shot. The, no, the one, no house was the destroyed. The soldiers left the, the army position. Palestinians came to them and told them, leave the position. They left, uh, they went out, and then they, they destroyed. And, and so it's an the army same. position so it's in not the same. one house so it's in Bet Omar of Arabs wasn't destroyed. If they want to be strong against people that attack the army, let them be strong against everybody. They cannot be strong only against the Jews and soft against the Arab enemy. Do you um, really believe that if not, uh, Mr. Roz was sitting in front of you, if there, if uh, we would had today a Palestinian guest sitting in front of you, do you think that he will agree with you that the IDF is actually 
taking care of the Palestinians and not of the settlers? There is no doubt that uh, in percentage, more uh, Jewish uh, illegal houses is, uh, are destroyed in Judea and Samaria than Arab houses. There are tens of thousands of Arab houses that are built illegal, and uh, maybe a few are destroyed every year. In, Air in Jewish houses, there are thousands, and uh, hundreds of them are being destroyed every year. Of course, those uh, figures are not right, but I, what I do say is that uh, if this is the view, if the army is there to protect the Palestinians, then maybe Mr. Mar Marzel will join me in an appeal to the army to end the occupation and to leave the occupied territories, and then uh, without protection to the Palestinians for, uh, that, from the army. And uh, let's see. Um, Welcome to the left. We will b bring an end to the occupation together and send the uh, the army back back home, because there is no need to protect the the Palestinians from the settlers, and uh, we can uh, we can end the occupation in that in that way. I want uh, to the only occupation I know is the Arab occupation yeah, yeah. in the land of Israel. There are no Palestinians. There were never Palestinians. There will never be a Palestinian state. And they're the occupiers here. By international law, all the land of Israel belongs to the nation, to the Jewish nation. That's the nation, nation, international law. What do you do with law. all the Arabs so that are so, living? If so, my suggestion so is... So if, if they behave, they could if, behave, okay. If so, my suggestion is that the Israeli government will uh, declare that uh, they uh, ask an international law decision about the future of Israel and Palestine, and will say in advance that they are willing to obey any decision of the international court or uh, international arbitration that will take a decision according to the international law. I say in advance, I can accept that. And since you said what you have said, probably you can accept that too. So just we have now to nominate three or five arbitrators they will have uh, to decide, according to the international law, what will be the future. I, I believe the Palestinians can accept that. And uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the Israeli leftist government will not accept that, but you accept that, and I accept that, and some others probably I will. I believe that uh, a lot of the Arabs don't want Israel to live Judea and Samaria. Okay. They don't want uh, their so dictatorship to represent to, the Palestinians. No, no, they don't want. In the next uh, elections you can run, maybe you can win Abu Mazen. Uh, maybe. Uh, it would you know, be his one, one, popularity. One, uh, one, uh, maybe I can. Something is very interesting. You, you said that I asked you what, you what are you planning to do with uh, when you say Arabs? So you say the Arabs who are living inside Israel and the Arabs who are living, the Palestinians who are living outside. What are you planning to do with all the Arabs who are living around you? Well, I'll uh, tell you that uh, anyone that's ready to live peacefully with the Jewish state is welcome to stay. But any Arab or Jew that as wants to destroy as the state of Israel doesn't have a right citizen. to stay here. He has to leave as, here. I'm asking you as an Arab. Me, I am an Arab. As an Arab, am I equal to you? If you're ready to accept this as a Jewish state, yes. If I accept the Jewish state, I'm equal yes. to you. If you accept this as a Jewish state. I think that the acceptance of a Jewish state, and I think, is is a well-known fact to everybody. Well, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that Abu Mazen accepts. I accept the Jewish state. I accept the Jewish state. I don't think that the Hamas. I don't think that the Hamas accepts. This is the question. I accept the Jewish state, but do you really need people to accept you? Do you really need the the recognition no. from no, another? No, no. I, I don't need the recognition, but I need people not to fight the Jewish state. And anyone that supports the PLO, supports the Hamas, supports our enemy. What and he's a part attack military and he's a part of the enemy uh, of the Jewish state. But and when the why. enemy is also growing another enemy, um, uh, we see that Israel has its own enemies. The, 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 its own people are fighting against each other. 
because when people, when settlers are actually attacking IDF soldiers who are there to support them or, and who are there to actually, uh, and, and they acknowledge the Jewish state because they are soldiers. So how come this can be resolved with the Palestinians? Well, I, I, I'm sure that we have to resolve our problems inside uh, our uh, and inside the Jewish people, and uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, the majority of uh, uh, of Israelis think like me, and uh, uh, if if uh, uh, politicians won't uh, send. Uh, the Israeli army to do political uh, You know, I, uh, I have, I just, we have to finish because 16 minutes already passed. Uh, gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for this. I, I think that this problem will never be solved, unfortunately. We're going out. We will be back for the one-on-one. Don't go anywhere. Not to be solved.